definitely one of the best days of my life, and I think also for a lot of people here at SpaceX, it's the culmination of a dream. As we round out the month of March, I wanted to take a second and reflect on the fact that, yes, SpaceX is celebrating 20 years. That is such a milestone. And if you've followed their journey at all, you know it has been a wild one. So I wanted to make this video to show you kind of the timeline from then to now. Elon Musk definitely has some good dance moves. Here he is dancing to the grand opening of the Giga Factory in Berlin. But things were not always easy, especially in the beginning. They were far from easy. It is absolutely tremendous to see what SpaceX has gone through to become the company that they are today. So of course I'm taking from this book Lift Off by Eric Berger, highly suggest, but we are going to look at a timeline. So on May 6, 2002, SpaceX was founded by Elon Musk. Then on Halloween in 2002, there was the first gas generator full duration test firing in Mojave, California. In every decision we've made has been with consideration to simplicity. And the reason for simplicity is because that both improves the reliability as well as uh, uh, it reduces your cost. Um, if you've got fewer components, that's fewer components to go wrong and fewer components to buy. In 2003, things really started to pick up. On March 11th, we had the first Merlin engine thrust chamber firing in McGregor, Texas. Then on May 31st, SpaceX employees visited Kwajalein for the first time. On July 2nd, the first Merlin engine turbo pump test was also conducted in Mojave, California. And on December 4th, the Falcon 1 was displayed outside the National Air and Space Museum. In 2004, things were really starting to get fired up, literally. On February 17th, they had the first propellant loading of stage one. Also February 22nd, the first Kestrel engine thrust chamber firing. And on July 1st, the first complete Merlin engine test firing. These were all done in McGregor, Texas. On October 5th, the Falcon 1 rocket went vertical at Vandenberg Air Force Base in California. And here's a clip from an interview in 2004 with Elon. What I, what I think we're beginning to see is the dawn of a new era of space exploration, uh, but one that is uh, driven by uh, commercial uh, companies uh, as much, if not more, than by, by government. It's so cool to listen to these old interview clips and realize that things that he predicted would happen have come to fruition today and that he really has had this vision for so long and it's finally happening. So here we are in 2005. On May 27th, the Falcon 1 had a static fire test firing in Vandenberg. Then on November 27th, there was the first static fire attempt from Kwajalein and Omelec Island. On December 20th, there was the first Falcon 1 launch attempt, but that was obviously an attempt. That one didn't work out, so they would have to wait a few months. So then we're in 2006 on March 24th, Falcon 1 had its flight one from Omlek. On August 18th, SpaceX won a COTS award from NASA. Now, 2007 is looking pretty barren. There's only one entry and it says on March 21st, there was the Falcon 1 Flight 2 from Omlek. That also didn't go so well. In 2008, on August 3rd, there was Falcon 1 Flight 3 also from Omlek. That one still didn't go well, so it was really fourth time is a charm for SpaceX. If you read this book, you'll know that if they didn't get that fourth attempt right, they were done. That was their last hope, their last chance of actually making SpaceX successful. So it's amazing that it worked out. So still in 2008, on September 3rd, we had a C-17 carrying the Falcon 1 first stage departing from Los Angeles. On September 28th, we had Falcon 1 Flight 4. So August 3rd, we had Flight 3. That one was also not very successful for what they wanted to do. So they finally had the successful Flight 4 on September 28th. Stay yeah, separation confirmed. confirmed. So it was only a few weeks later. It's really amazing that they were able to pull that together. On November 22nd in 2008, there was the Falcon 9 full duration test firing from McGregor. Wait, it's 10, 
And on December 22nd, SpaceX won a CRS award from NASA. And in 2009, we said goodbye to Falcon 1. There was on July 14th, the fifth and final flight of Falcon 1. We have liftoff of the SpaceX Falcon 1 from the Rosicksat satellite for ATSB. Stage separation confirmed. The fact that we have space rockets now that can land themselves back on Earth or sea right way up and within about an inch of their target is absolutely incredible. Brilliant offers a course about gravitational physics and it really breaks down the engineering considerations of space travel. Of course, we start by exploring Newton's law of gravity and then we unpack its universe of consequences. If you take this course, you'll learn more about angular momentum, black holes, equivalence principle, gravitational fields, orbital mechanics, the slingshot effect, and Kepler's laws. I chose to highlight this course because I really think it's one that you guys will definitely be interested in. You can join millions of people already learning on Brilliant, and I have a special offer for you. If you go to brilliant.org slash space, you can get started for free with Brilliant's interactive lessons, and the first 200 listeners will also get 20% off an annual membership. One of the things that's great about Brilliant is they have hands-on interactive learning because that is one of the most effective ways to learn. If you learn interactively, you learn six times more effectively than if you were just listening to a lecture. So if you guys are interested in diving deeper into some of the engineering considerations for traveling through space, give this course a go. And if you do try it out, let me know what you think about it. Again, thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. 2010 is where things really start to get interesting. We saw on June 4th, the Falcon 9 first launch from Ten, Cape Canaveral, Florida. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Stage one. Liftoff. We have a liftoff of the Falcon 9. On December 8th, there was the first launch of the Cargo Dragon spacecraft from Cape Canaveral. Well, in general, the government it is not the best entity to do any kind of optimization or efficiency. As soon as you're talking about wanting to rapidly innovate on, on technology and high efficiency, that's where the private sector is best. Well, best of luck. Then fast forward eight years all the way to 2018. On February 6th, we had the Falcon Heavy first launch from Kennedy Space Center in Florida. SpaceX Falcon Heavy, go for launch. Falcon Heavy is configured for flight. A minus 15, stand by for terminal count. And nine, eight. Side booster ignition. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Ignition. The following year in 2019, on August 27th, we had Starhopper's 500 foot test flight from Boca Chica, Texas. In 2020, on May 30th, the first astronauts launched aboard a Crew Dragon from the Kennedy Space Center. T plus 30 seconds into this historic mission. Flying crew on board Dragon and Falcon 9 and look at them go! And on August 4th, 2020, the first full-sized Starship prototype made a 500-foot test flight from Boca Chica, Texas. It's really crazy to realize how many times SpaceX failed and they really could have just thrown in the towel and we wouldn't have what we know and love today. And can we imagine a world without SpaceX? I can't. I really feel like SpaceX is our only realistic hope of making it off this planet. SpaceX has done so much for humanity and it's just really incredible to see what they've been able to do against all odds and really change the entire aerospace industry. 
I don't need to tell you this, I'm preaching to the choir, but I thought that it would be interesting to take a look back, um, kind of a history of SpaceX and everything they've achieved, so where are we now? Well, if you haven't seen the news already, we know that the FAA has once again delayed. How many delays are there gonna be? They've once again delayed the environmental review completion until April 29th. However, this shouldn't have a big impact on SpaceX's plans, according to several articles. And Elon said recently that he doesn't expect the orbital launch to happen until May, probably late May, so this shouldn't impact them too much. So I want to know from you, how long have you been following SpaceX's journey and all of their progress over the last 20 years? Love to read your comments, so please leave me a comment below. Also, let me know where you're from. I also like learning those details as well. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, please make sure to like it and subscribe to Ellie in Space if you're not already. I'll see you soon.